It seems that a number of our new YMYW listeners are working abroad or planning to retire overseas. Welcome. We're glad you found us. Today on Your Money, Your Wealth podcast number 345, Joe and Big Al answer questions on eligibility for the foreign earned income exclusion, using the tax refund thanks to the foreign earned income exclusion to do a backdoor Roth conversion, and using health savings accounts or HSAs when working abroad. Plus, the early retirement spitball analyses in episode 341 were so popular that today the fellows will spitball some more of them for you. Our substantially equal periodic payments, or SEPPs, from your retirement savings a good idea to bridge the gap between retiring early and age 59 and a half? And finally, is there ever a good time to time the market? Visit YourMoneyYourWealth.com and click Ask Joe and Al on air to send in your money questions. I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson, CFP, and Big Al Clopine, CPA. To the YMYW crew, I've recently discovered your podcast, and I'm disappointed I didn't find it earlier. Oh, I thought I was going to be. I recently discovered your podcast, and I'm, I'm very, very disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> One star. And that's why I'm writing it. <laughs> because you, need you guys get, you need to get off the air. Uh, very disappointed. Um, I'm 41, married, with a newborn son. All right. Uh, we currently live overseas as American expats, and I work for an American company. I'm expecting to qualify for the foreign earned income exclusion again for year 2021. I estimate that my gross income for 2021 will be about $245,000, putting me in the 24% tax bracket. Last year, I received a tax refund of about $15,000, due mostly to the foreign income exclusion. I would like to do something productive with that overpayment since we really don't need the refund. I have about $190,000 in an IRA that I would like to start converting to Roth. In addition, I'm also planning on a backdoor Roth 401k via after-tax contributions, which should be converted amount of about 30k. Uh, my first year doing a backdoor Roth conversion after hearing this talked about on your show many times. It might be the first day last year. All right. Well, thank you for bringing it up once again. <laughs> <laughs> after these. Are there any pitfalls I need to know about regarding these plans while using the foreign earned income exclusion? My line of thinking is that I'm getting a lower average tax rate. I should do some conversions uh, from tax deferred to tax free account. I'm definitely up for any ideas that you guys might have for someone in my situation. Not looking for advice, of course, just starting a conversation. Uh, some of some more info on my situation if you need it no or uh, no house or mortgage wife is not working approximately net worth of 1.7 million dollars we old we own two old beat up vehicles and have no pets unless you count the army of dumpster cats that patrol the neighborhood wow hmm. dumpster cats yeah appreciate your time nash Nash. Oh, like that. that's a good name that's a badass name <laughs> Nash. I'm going to change my name to Nash. <laughs> Are you Graham Nash? No, I'm just Nash. Nash. I'm going to move to Nashville. <laughs> um, all right. What the hell is this um, foreign exclusion income? What's, what is he talking about here? Al? Well, I guess he wants to, he wants to know if there's any issues with doing Roth conversions or mega backdoor Roths, I think with the foreign income exclusion, not that I'm aware of Nash. It, it works just the same way that the foreign income exclusion is, it's just an extra deduction that you get when you're working, when you're, when you're an American citizen working in a foreign country, and it's, I don't know, it's about $105,000 roughly in that range that you don't have to count as U.S. income. And the idea is that you're already paying tax in that in the country that you're working in, so you don't have to pay it again in the U.S. Now, of course, we know that the rule is, is such that when you have, when you do have income, uh, any kind of income, no matter where you're living outside the U.S., it's still fully taxed in the U.S. You pay tax in the U.S., you pay tax in the foreign country, 
you get a tax credit in the U.S. generally for the taxes you paid in the foreign country. But the U.S. kind of said, you know what, that's sort of a complicated rule for most people. So we're going to put in this foreign income exclusion. So anyone that makes less than 105000 you don't even have to worry about it. Just pay the tax in the other country. But it doesn't really affect your U.S. taxes other than you've got an extra deduction. You can still do backdoor Roth. You can still do Roth conversions. It's the same tax law. So let's say... Um... So does the exclusion um, outweigh the, the, the foreign tax credit um, if he's in a higher income bracket? Uh, usually the exclusion's better, but I, I can't say I've done But I, well, I guess my question is, if he does a Roth IRA conversion that puts his modified adjusted gross income, does he fall into, you know what I mean? Is it now like he doesn't get the exclusion, he's now on the tax credit? No, or? no, because the exclusion is based upon salary, earned income Got only. It. Yeah, not modified adjusted gross income or anything like that. All right. There you go, Nash. Thanks for uh thanks for writing in. Uh let's go to uh Kat. Um, I have a question on retiring to another country. Oh. and doing the taxes. Uh, the country we are moving to has a program that charges a flat rate of 10% on worldwide income for pensioners with residency. Okay. Please look at my example below and let me know if I'm figuring this out correctly. Okay. (laughs) We're ready, Kat. All right. Our provisional income, Social Security, $30,000, pension, $2,000, and investment income, $20,000 equals $52,000. I am not retirement age yet, so Social Security and pension are for my husband only. Since we filed joint married, in the provisional income is over the $44,000 limit, my husband's Social Security will be taxed at 85%, correct? The, um, well, yes and no. Um, <laughs> the, the, the provisional income, how you calculated it, I don't think is quite right. It's, it, you actually take half of Social Security plus other income to get your provisional income. I'm assuming that your husband's social security, your full, his full social security is 30,000. So you'd only take 15 and add it to the two and add it to the 20. So you'd get, um, what would that be? About 37,000 provisional income. If I, if I did this right. Yeah. But up to a certain limit, it's 50% tax. And then after that is 85% tax. Yeah. So you would want to take an effective rate. So yeah. And it, that's another good point. It's not a, it's not a cliff. In other words, if you're a dollar over, if you're 44 or one, it's just that $1 is taxed at 85%, not the whole thing. Um, so total, we would be taxed in the country we are living in at 10% flat rate would be uh, 47,500, uh, times 10% equals 4750. We would, oh, correct. Well, it depends upon the country. Every country has different rules on how they calculate income. So if this is if how you mentioned is how the, the country you're moving to, uh, how they calculate income, then I guess that sounds right, but every country is different. That's what makes international taxation, uh, pretty, pretty tough. So they're looking at a flat rate of 10%. So the flat rate of 10% would be on taxable income. Right. And so you would look at what your taxable income is on your tax return. And you're trying to, she's trying to figure her taxable income, but she's, she's coming up with provisional income. I don't know why she's coming up with provisional income when provisional income just determines how much your social security is going to be subject to tax. Unless that's what the other country calls it. Oh, (laughs) you know why is because maybe the 10% flat rate is just on income, social security and pensions. Maybe. Everything else is taxed differently. Although she's got investment income of 20K. So, so I don't know. But 10% on worldwide income for pensioners. Yeah. For people that are retired, I guess. I a- anyway, so, so um, well, and then the second, let me, let's do the second part of the question. Then we'll tie it all together. All right. Then the second part of the question, after we pay taxes in country, uh, we reside, we would file a, in the U.S., you could receive a foreign earned income exclusion. Uh, thank you in advance. Please let me know if I'm figuring this out correctly. So the second question, the answer is no. The foreign income exclusion is only for salary. It's, it's not for other income. So here's the basic rules when you move to another country. So you pay taxes in that other country. What, however they calculate taxes, right? <laughs> so it, it depends. <laughs> Everyone's different, right? But you also, as a U.S. citizen, you pay you pay taxes on the same income and, and U S has a worldwide income 
Uh, in other words, no matter where you make the income, it's taxable. So does this other country, according to Kat. So anyway, you pay the taxes in the country you're living in. You do the same income in the U.S., but you get a tax credit in the U.S. for taxes that you pay in the other country. So if the other country's taxes are $5,000 and U.S. taxes are $4,000, you get a credit in the U.S. for $4,000. So you would end up paying no tax in the U.S. You pay $5,000 to the other country. On the other hand, same example, $5,000 is your foreign taxes, but U.S. is $6,000. You will pay $5,000 in the other country. You will get a $5,000 credit in U.S. and you will pay $1,000 in the U.S. That's basically how it works. It's a little more complicated, but that's the idea. All right. Very good. Thanks for the question, Kemp. Um, Alan Joe, HSA question, not a Rob. Yeah. Oh. All right. A few weeks back, you answered some of my questions regarding living overseas and investing. Super helpful. Good. I've had one additional follow-up. Is there anything in the tax code that would prohibit Americans who live abroad from contributing to an HSA account? Uh, their medical plan meets HSA eligibility as a high deductible plan. And two, their plan has worldwide coverage, Cigna, including in the United States. I could not see anything in tax publication 969 that indicates we can't. As always, uh, your thoughts are much appreciated. Uh, we plan on using the HSA as an investment vehicle. We will be paying all medical bills with our U.S.-based credit card while working overseas to keep track of medical expenses in U.S. dollars for later use once retired. When we decide to pull the funds from the HSA, kind regards, uh, Jeff. Well, Jeff, if you're not going to use the HSA funds for HS or like for health purposes, you're using it as a retirement play. Uh, to get more money pre-tax into the overall plan, right? I think you're totally fine. If 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 you have a high deductible eligible plan that you that your employer has overseas, I don't see any reason why you you wouldn't be able to contribute to the HSA. Uh, and I'm not sure I know the answer to that one. I don't know either, but yeah. I, but I, it, it here's my knowledge: if you have an HSA eligible plan, right, which he does. Yeah. So, so, and I, I think that's the, that's the most important thing. I, I think this is, this is now just an, a, a guesstimate. If you had a health insurance plan in a foreign country, I sort of doubt that that would qualify, but maybe it's a, maybe it's a U.S. company with foreign operations and it's still a U.S. health insurance plan. Maybe that qualifies. Well, it's a worldwide plan. Cigna. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that, that would, well, yeah, which which is also in U.S. So is, <laughs> I guess maybe so. Yeah. I mean, I have read that you cannot do that working in a foreign country, but I think that was referring to foreign insurance companies, foreign me foreign health insurance companies. So uh, that would be my guess too. I would guess yes, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah. Sorry, Jeff. Um, but so let's assume that it's a gray area, right? He puts the money in. Right. It's going to grow. I mean, it, if, if he ever gets audited, he could say, here, I had an HSA eligible plan yeah, he could say, through Cigna. And he could say, Joe and Al said it was okay. And then he's going <laughs> to yeah, play this recording back to, to the- yeah, um, Keep this for the next uh, uh, five years. To the IRS agent uh, that comes to So Joe, door. what do you have to say to the IRS right now? All right, we got to take a break. <laughs> Just go out your money or wealth. All right, so here's the thing. On YMYW, Joe and Big Al can help you rough out some strategies to stretch your dollars from here to overseas to retirement. But obviously, you don't want to base important decisions or your entire financial future on a spitball analysis and best guesses. Schedule a free financial assessment with one of the certified financial planner professionals on Joe and Big Al's team at Pure Financial Advisors to begin building a clear financial plan for retirement. Like the YMYW podcast, this assessment is free. But unlike the podcast, a financial assessment is a one-on-one, -on -one, comprehensive, deep dive into your financial life to help you make the most of what you've got based on where you're at now, what you want to accomplish, and how much risk you want to take to get there. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your podcast app to go to the show notes, then click get an assessment to schedule your free financial assessment. We got Susie writes in from Brookfield. It's a city in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Waukesha. It's one yeah. of my favorites. One of your favorites. It is. Yeah. You'd love that name. 
It is. Yeah. Uh, favorite beer, Spotted Cow. You know what? That is my favorite beer as well, Susie. Wow. From Waukesha. Look what happened that. to Coors? Well, I mean, it's hard to get Waukesha. Uh, it, it's really hard to get cow. Spotted Cow. My cousin kind of sneaks it in. He mails it to me. <laughs> uh, it's Bruton, Wisconsin. Hope you've tried it, Joe. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you, Suze. Uh, favorite drink is Tito's and Tonic. Hmm. All right. That's a little tasty. I have driven various Lexuses over the last 10 years, married two kids in college, funded, and have the best yellow lab. Love your podcast. Here's the information. All right. We are both 50, and we plan to retire from corporate America at the age of 55 when I qualify as retired for equity and retiree medical. Uh, Current balances are $500,000 after tax, $3 million in pre-tax, uh, that includes a million dollar estimate of a lump sum pension plan. Got an annuity options um, that we are evaluating, but planning on taking the lump sum. Annual spending is about $120,000 a year. We will have subsidized pre 65 health care at age 55, unless company takes it away in the next five years. So fingers crossed that annual spend holds. No debt, but thinking about a second home in Florida in the next couple of years. We will have our highest taxable income this year, uh, $465,000. As such, still shoveling money into pre-tax versus Roth. However, thanks to your podcast, I did my first $10,000 in-plan conversion last year to the top of the 24% tax bracket. Okay. Question. Would you alter my plan to continue with pre-tax savings up to the limits and let the overflow go into a brokerage account? I have backdoor option, but limited to 16% of 200K. Husband is not sure, um, but if he has backdoor or not in his 403B. Do you understand what she's saying there? I I think she's talking about the mega backdoor. I have a backdoor option, but limited to 16% of 200,000. I think re- replace the backdoor with, add the word mega. I have a mega backdoor, mega backdoor Roth option limited to 16%. That's what I think. Okay. I'm guessing, which would be 32,000. If that's, if I'm understanding that right. So she talks in percentages is, was what you're telling me. Instead of saying 32,000, she's like 16% of 200 grand. That's what it says. I'm, oh just, God, I'm just doing a little math <laughs> <laughs> for, for people that don't think that way. I will likely use my unvested equity income to live on the first few years. Uh, but we'll have 17 years of annual spending before RMDs are required. A source, uh, Social Security kicks in. So plan to take from pre-tax to blend down. Bleed. Uh, I'm sorry, to bleed that down uh, to live on and still stay in that 22% tax bracket. Spitball away, please. Uh, T.Y. Guessing that's, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good guess. All right. Um, okay. So, so. What do you think? 120. What do they have in total? Um, $3 million, right? Yeah. Three and a half. Three and like. a half. It looks. Yeah. yeah three it. and a half. Yeah. All right. Uh, most of it's pre-tax. Yep. So and they're going to spend 120. Uh, their social security is probably going to be 50,000. Um, so they still need probably 60, 70% coming from that. They're in the highest tax bracket, 340 base, 75 bonus, 50 um, in options exercised. So um, I, I like where she's at. Got a ton of assets given right. where her living expenses are. Um, I think retiring at age 55, they got the health care kind of taken care of. Um, if they separate from service at 55, you know, they have access to the um, to their retirement accounts. So that's good. What would you do anything different, Big Al? Well, I, I mean, so if, if you think about the spending need of 120 and they got about three and a half million, uh, they're retiring young, that it, I guess one of the things you got to, re- you know, when, you, when you're going to retire at 55 and you got a 401k, you want to work until you're 55 and then you retire and then you still keep the money in the 401k, then you can actually pull money out 
and you pay tax on it, of course, but you won't pay penalty. So that's one thing you, that you know they want to make sure they they do because they're gonna looks like they're probably gonna have to withdraw from their pre tax to be, make this work. Well, um, yeah, the, it's like a three and a half distribution rate at fifty five. Yeah, until the, you got to bridge the gap to Social Security. Right, but given inflation, it's still gonna be you know plus tax. It's still gonna be around three three and you know three to four four percent. Right, right. So, so I, I think it works. I think you just want to make sure that you work till age 55 and then you retire and then you keep the money in the 401k so you can pull the money out if you need it out of the 401k without penalty. As far as I guess the question is, should, should she put the overflow into a brokerage account, I guess, versus doing the mega backdoor Roth? And I would say, do the mega back, backdoor Roth as long as you can, because then th- then you get the money into the Roth IRA. That seems like the, the better approach there. Right. If you have the ability to, well, you're, they're making $465,000 a year. Call it, they got $100,000 in taxes, maybe a little bit more. Um, so they got 300, call it. If they pay 165, they only spend 120. They have 200,000 that they could save. Right. Right. So what do you do with the $200,000? If you can put money into your 401k plan and you can still use the after-tax component up to the 58 or 50, I forget $60,000 roughly. Yeah. Then absolutely do that. And then you convert the after-tax dollars and you put that into the Roth. Yeah. I would still do that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So- that's your first. And then the other $150,000 that you have, then you would, then you would invest that into the brokerage account. Yeah. So he, here's my concern. And I, I don't, we don't know enough to, I'm, this is just a concern. This is what I want. This is what I would check Susie, if I were you, which is if you're making Four hundred sixty-five thousand, and you're saying three forty base, seventy-five thousand dollar bonus, fifty thousand stock option. So we'll take out the fifty thousand options because that's not really that, that's income, but you're not really receiving the cash. So in other words, you're making about four hundred thousand, and I know you're putting a whole bunch into the four hundred one k and and the mega backdoor, but are you really only spending one twenty? Mm-hmm. That's what that's what I would want to be careful of because a lot of times when people come to their office and they say I'm only spending X number of dollars, and we do the math, we figure out. Okay, what's the gross pay? Take out the stock options, take out the taxes, take out the 401k. All right, so what's left is um, is 225,000. And you're saying you're spending 120. So in other words, you're telling me you're saving 100,000 a year. And the people go, mm, not really. So th- that's the math you have to go through. Make sure that 120 is a good number. Right. But she said this is our biggest year um, ever, highest tax yeah, income year. I understand. So maybe it's the bonus and the options maybe. and the 340s, the base, but... Uh, but yeah, because if you're planning 120 and, and you're spending 200, the numbers don't make sense. Right. Because you're super close right now, Susie. If you're going to retire at 55, um, you're at three and a half, not including tax. Um, we would probably want to see that a little bit lower, uh, but they still have five years to retire and they're, they're making a ton of money yeah, as long as they can sock it. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. It, but the market could turn too. I don't know how it's invested. You lose right. 20%. Sure. And then you're kind of like, oh boy, here we go. Right, right. So you're close. Great job. Um, spitballing is just making sure that you're fine tuning it. Um, that's all I got for you. We got uh, Gilbert writes in from Los Angeles. He goes, hi, I love your show. It's the first podcast I listen to when it shows up in my podcast queue. Oh, bam. Thanks, hmm. Gilbert. I drive a 2011 Infinity G37. It's only the second car I've owned because the last car I drove for 20 years. Infinity G37. That's a pretty cool car. Yeah, it's close to my car. Yeah. I got an M37. Ooh, yeah, G, it's faster. Look at them all. They're they're all gray, silver, and black. (laughs) Uh, My wife and I are 51 years old and planning on retiring when we turned 55. Well, this is the second 55 retiree. Yeah, I like it. All right, we have about three million dollars in four hundred one k plans, a million dollars in traditional IRAs, three hundred thousand in Roth, two hundred thousand in brokerage accounts, two hundred thousand in savings accounts. All right, so that's three four. That's four point seven. Okay, our mortgage is nearly paid off, and we have no debt. We will use about one hundred fifty thousand dollars of savings account in the next year or so to do a kitchen remodel. So that will suck up much of our cash. Okay, we're going to lower it to 4.5 now. All right. I believe we will have plenty to cover retirement expenses of approximately $120,000 a year. 
as we will collect a $50,000 a year pension at 55 and $90,000 in Social Security when we turn 70. That includes the fact that we will stop working at age 55. The shortfall we will draw from our retirement accounts, which are currently allocated 75 equities, 25% bonds. Our current income is 360000 a year. And we currently max out our 401k contributions, $52,000, including the catch-up contribution in HSA account. But I was wondering if we should only contribute enough to get the company match and put the rest of the money in the brokerage account for tax diversification for the next four years. I hesitate to make Roth 401k contributions or conversions right now because my thought is that we should try to accumulate in our after-tax accounts right now. I'd love to know your thoughts, thanks. Okay, here's my quick thought. Okay. So Gilbert's jamming a ton of money in. He's got $4 million in pre-tax accounts, right? Yep. So that's a ton of cash that is going to be subject to income tax down the road. Yep. And he's realizing that even though he does have $4.5 million, roughly, that 90% of it is pre-tax and he needs a little bit more diversification. Right. So instead of going to the top or, or instead of, you know, maxing out the 401k plans as he is doing right now, um, he's saying, let's just go to the match. And then from there, stop putting money in pre-tax and put money in after tax. Okay. So if you have money in after tax dollars, Gilbert, when you sell those dollars, they are going to be taxed at a capital gains rate. In most cases, it's going to be lower than ordinary income. So sure. I mean, I like capital gains versus ordinary income, but you're not getting a tax deduction by putting the money into the brokerage account. So with that same thought, would you rather have the money sitting in a Roth account that would grow 100% tax-free? Again, you don't get the tax deduction, just like you didn't get the tax deduction by going into a brokerage account, but your Roth account will grow tax-free versus the brokerage account will be taxed at ordinary income rates. What would you rather have? I guess that's the first question, right? Sure. And I'm sure he's going to say tax-free. Right. But then he's going to be like, well, Joe, I need access to the money. Yeah, I got four years where I don't have enough money. Right. So what's the answer? FIFO tax treatment. So it's first in, first out in all Roth IRAs. So if you make contributions, you get your contributions out at any age tax-free. So that could be an option. Right. So even if he's going to take the money out of the Roth prematurely, it's still going to be, if, if he has room that he could put money into the Roth, I like that option a lot better. Yeah, you almost always do that. And, and, and you're right. So when it's a contribution, so a 401k Roth contribution, it simply means that those dollars you've already paid tax on. So you can withdraw them any age, next day, whatever. There, there's no tax to pay. But I, I think the smartest thing is, yeah, I agree with you, jam up your Roth as much as you can. But for the next four years, if, as long as you retire at age 55 and have a 401k plan, you can withdraw money out of the 401k to cover your expense needs, right? For the next four years without penalty. I think that's what you're worried about is the tax penalty probably till 59 and a half. You can withdraw that money out of the 401k. You're going to be in a low tax bracket anyway. You probably could also do Roth conversions along with withdrawing to pay for your living expenses because you'll be in a low enough bracket. And then, then that seems to be the best of all worlds to me. So he's like, you know, I hesitate um, to make the Roth 401k contributions or conversions right now because my thought is that we should try to accumulate in our after-tax accounts right now. Love to hear your thoughts. I, I guess I would want to know more. I would say, Gilbert, why? You, you know what I mean? Why do you want to grow that account versus a Roth account? Yeah, I think he's thinking he's only got 200000 outside of retirement accounts, and that's all he's got to work with over the next four years before he hits 59 and a half. So, so here's another, or maybe he understands the tax rules, but here's another weird thing that people do with their money is that if it's a retirement account, psychologically, they're like, I don't want to touch this money. That's why they they deplete cash. They deplete like their brokerage accounts first. 
And then because it, well, they've always we've always been taught to defer, 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 right? Don't touch that money until you absolutely have to. Right. And so he's thinking, well, maybe I need to have a, a little bit more of a piggy bank here, you know, a little bit more of a nest egg that's outside of my retirement accounts. I would say, Gilbert, don't worry about that. Money is money. It's just taxed a little bit differently. And depending on the type of account, you have certain restrictions depending on your age. But if you're retiring at 55, you, you, you qualify for any type of distribution as long as you follow the rules. Right. And, and I think, you know, so, so just kind of thinking about this again, uh, if you've got $400,000 outside of retirement account, you're spending... Hundred twenty thousand a year, right? Hundred twenty thousand. Fifty thousand dollars. But, but you're getting fifty, so you're really only spending seventy of your own money, mm -hmm. right? So, so really, I mean, even if you keep seventy thousand just for a years of expenses, just to be safe, you still have three hundred thirty thousand to work with. And if you need seventy thousand for the next four years, there you go. You you've got it. So now you don't take any money out of any retirement accounts. You you do big Roth conversions for those next four years, and and you're in a much better shape. Yep. I agree because he's going to, he's going to be in a higher tax bracket potentially in the future. Yeah. See, that's the problem. You got $4 million in retirement accounts. Plus 90,000 of social security plus $50,000 right. pension. Can you imagine that? I mean, so for, let's just look no at debt. Look at the RMD. So, so that's the, the, the retirement accounts are going to be worth 10 million bucks at 72. It could, could be, I mean, even 6 million, let's just say 6 million. So, so 4% of that's 240,000. That's your required minimum distribution plus another, what, 100, 140,000 of, of fixed income. income. So yeah. you're 350? -ish. Right. Yeah. So think about that. So you want to get more money into the Roth as much as possible. Yeah. If you cash flow this thing out, um, Gilbert, I think you'll realize that Roth is going to be a better play if you need more cash, you know, if, as an emergency or something like that. It's, it's available. Um, so... Roth is always better in, in most cases because it compounds tax free right. and you still have access to the money if you need it versus, you know, in a brokerage account, which is great. I like that too. I like the diversification aspect, but if I were to pick one or the other, um, I, I would go Roth all day. You know, inflation is another important factor to consider as you're determining where to squirrel away those dollars for retirement. How might rising inflation impact market returns, your investment portfolio, and your retirement plans? Is higher inflation likely, or is weaker economic growth a bigger risk to your portfolio? Get answers to these questions in our brand new white paper on inflation and the markets, available for a limited time in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your podcast app to go to the show notes and download this new inflation white paper for free. While you're there, check out the latest from the Your Money, Your Wealth television show. It is a can't-miss two-part episode called Financial Planning Must-Dos Before You Retire. And if you like the podcast and the TV show and the free financial resources, why not share them? Hello, Miss Andy. I hope you get paid extra for putting up with the boys. <laughs> are, uh, are we that bad? Wow. I will just say that I, I knew what I was getting into when I signed up, so <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I suppose, right? Yep. It sounds uh, like they can be a handful at times. Uh, this is JP from Northern Virginia. I'm a YMYW new listener. Not much of a drinker. Uh, likes the water. Mm, water. Uh, water <laughs> water's the best drink. Uh, my wife and I are 46 with 3 million in retirement saving accounts. But if he drank, it would be over 300,000. <laughs> <laughs> There's something to that. It's like, because of that, you can retire early. Um, I'm seriously uh, considering my options at retiring at age 50. I'd probably be looking at a 40 year retirement for planning purposes. Uh, the investments in my retirement account are currently 80% stocks, 20% bonds. Um, all index funds and seem to be growing at an annual rate that exceeds my $120,000 gross salary. If I'm already 72, I think my total RMD for the year would be closer to my current salary. And I've got 26 years of potential growth uh, to come before those distributions kicked in. So pre-tax assets, $2 million. Uh, pre-tax 401A is $700,000. He's got a Roth IRA of 400K and a Roth 403b of uh, 14k that he just started this year uh, got no pension no real estate beyond the primary residence he's got a thousand dollars in a brokerage account that he also just opened 
a little bit of savings, nothing significant beyond the household emergency fund. Uh, the wife doesn't believe she has enough money saved for retirement, uh, just over a million dollars, nearly all pre-tax. She may also have a pension as a federal employee. Therefore, she's thinking she'll retire um, or she'll work until she's 55. She currently earns $180,000 annually, having surpassed my annual income within the last few years. So is he, is there two different, um, so we got GP, he's talking about his funds and then his wife has got an additional million. Um, I is believe, that, well, let's see. Is that what you're getting out of this? So he's got 2.7. Well, let, let, let me add it up. He says with 3 million in my retirement savings accounts. So yeah, it sounds like they're separate. Okay. Yeah. yeah if you add up his numbers, it's over three. All right. And then, so she's got another million, which yep. is four. Yep. So it's four. Okay. Yep. Um, RMDs aside. I think we'll be okay since uh, be okay once we're 59 and a half. I'm just wondering if I can do anything else to take advantage of my retirement funds in the 10 years prior without significant penalties, like the 10% penalty for early withdrawal. I understand expenses um, are outstanding expenses are the mortgage on our residence, 400,000 on pace to be paid off while we're 59 and 60 and hopefully sending two kids to college. 100K already in 529 accounts, um, adding another $10,000 per year per kid. Uh, no plans to reallocate or uh, relocate or spend too lavishly once retired. So, am I a good candidate for SEPPs? Uh, so, that's separate equal periodic payment he's referring to on the 72T calculations for generating income close to my current salary give or take $20,000. Would pursuing SEPPs for 10 years really screw up my retirement savings for life after 59 and a half? Are my early retirement income options limited to savings and investing as much as I can for the next five years in Roth 403Bs and taxable accounts? Okay. All right. So he's, let's, he's 46 and he wants to retire at 50? Yeah. Okay. And, and she, and she she's going to work until 55. 55. Correct. And we don't, and how much are they spending? Well, he just, he wants, he's talking about a 72 T election to take 20,000. And that, that generates income close to his current salary. So if that's all you want, then he's 120,000 salary. But here's, oh. here's my point is that, okay, let's first explain what a 72T tax election. Yes. It's an, a separate equal periodic payment. There's three ways to calculate it. And basically you can take money out of a retirement account and avoid the 10% penalty. So, but you have to take the same equal periodic payment out of the account um, for five years or till you turn 59 and a half, whichever is longer. So if he turns 50, he's going to have to run the calculation and take the same amount of money out of the account until he turns 59 and a half. Um, so he's curious, do I do this? Um, but I'm, I don't think he has to. Um, if he, if his wife is still working, I guess is, are they running everything super separate? Maybe. You know what I mean? Right. I, I think what he has to look at, yes, you can do the separate. See, I'm not a huge fan of those because you're locked in until they're, you're 59 and a half. They're inflexible, right? Totally inflexible. The market kind of blows up. This happened back in 2000 when the dot com bust and all these dot comers kind of retired early and they took a separate equal periodic payment and they're in their late 40s, early 50s, right? And they have to take the same amount of money out each year and it's based on a formula based on today's value right and now you're stuck pulling out 30 40 50 thousand dollars from the account and the market's tanking the last thing you want to do is sell securities right right so it's i'm not a huge fan of it but it could work for you i would just want to know what is your annual expenses does your wife cover it you can stop saving as much money in the overall plans because you already know you have plenty of cash if you combine the two. Right. She's probably going to have a pension. Then you have Social Security and everything else. I think it's just mapping out the cash flows to figure out, hey, how much money does the household need to be saving? She doesn't think she can retire. He wants to retire. Right. They need to come together. I think it's kind of back to is your 
you, you know, are you and your spouse talking about this? Yeah, as, yeah. as a collective, right? And so I'll just quickly say, yeah. So if if you if your spouse makes enough income to live off of, then that will work till her age fifty five. She would retire at age fifty five. She has. I don't know what kind of retirement plan, but let's assume it's a 401k or something like that. So if she retires at 55, then she could pull money out without a penalty. Maybe she pays the expenses for the first 10 years, and then you pay the expenses for the second 10 years and you and you equal out. And you might think about refinancing your mortgage to a 30-year low payment, because you're going to need low payments for the next decade. And then maybe you could avoid the 72T. Right. And then you just pay out the mortgage after later. Yeah. yeah when, after when you have the ability to pull the money out of the IRA. Or, yeah. Yep. I heard on your August 31st podcast, those that fire before retirement age and don't begin taking social security until 67 or later, that their benefits are lower. I think Al said the caller $4,400 per month benefit would be more like 3000. This person was currently wanting to fire at 55 (laughs) financial independence retire early if this person has the 35 years where did you read they would not receive their full benefit amounts sign me future fire age 57 Got and it. more than 35 years under her belt. Okay, so uh, Barbara, you, you are correct. I mean, so in this example, if this person started working at age 20, right, and they retired 55, they would have 35 years. But here's the point, which maybe I didn't make clear. What you make at age 20 is usually a lot less than what you make, what you would have made at age 56, 57, 58, 59, and so on. So when you work till age 65, it, it assumes that you're making that same higher salary that you're making age 55 all the way through to age 65. That's why when you retire early, even if you have 35 years in, it tends to be a lower benefit. Right. Because they're also looking at the adjustment of through inflation too. True. So they're going to look at, you know, X amount of years, but they're plugging in all of those years, right? Into their equation all the way up to their full retirement age. So if you retire at 50, you know, even though you might have 35 or 40 years of, of, of benefit, uh, that collective benefit might be lower than if you were to work until age. Yeah, because they, they take your, your last year's salary and they project that forward for the next, in this case, 10 years and or 11 years until full retirement age. So that's that's why you tend to have lower benefits that's what, than what's on the statement. Now, if you're a child prodig- prodig- you know, prodigy, so an actor made a lot of money in your 20s, then sure, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Let's um, time in the market. Is there ever a time when it's, when it's time to time the market? No. <laughs> and that's like a nursery rhyme. <laughs> that's quick. That was Gary from El Cajon. There's never a time. Never a time. Is there a time when the time is quite the time? Right. All right. Uh, that's it for us. Hopefully you enjoyed another episode. Um, we'll be back again next week. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Percentages and beer, specifically Spotted Cow and Sierra Nevada, are in the derails at the end of the episode, so keep listening. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Click that Get an Assessment button in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257 to schedule your free financial assessment video call. It doesn't matter where you are in the country or out of the country. Chances are one of the certified financial planners at Pure will be able to identify identify strategies to help you create a more successful retirement. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. I don't think you're supposed to mail blue. Mail can beer? Can he you mail? It? Oh, yeah, he mails it. Okay. Bottle. In a, it's, there's in like a, the a, bubble wrap. Is in an envelope. <laughs> no, it's a big, big box and it's it. full of bubble wrap. Got it. Okay. But yeah, he's, he ships okay. me some uh, spotted cow every now and again because he lives okay. in uh, Wisconsin. Got it. Um, how old are you? Uh, 17%. I'm 200. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that may make me young. Oh, my God. 34. <laughs> oh my god how much is my tab well it's actually uh, 
22 percent of 45 <laughs> <laughs> no one talks that way. What do you? Oh my God! Uh, you like Sarah Nevada? Um, not necessarily. <laughs> I don't know why. That's a little stronger than your Coors Light. Yeah, probably blow my. Yeah, no, I just get a headache. You know what I do like from Sierra Nevada is their um, 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 hazy IPA. I do like that one. Hmm. But two or more give me a headache. Yeah. So okay. one is my limit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Remember uh, that time I drank that? What was that beer from Gordon Beer? I don't know. I had four of them and I was out the next day. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. You had to do the radio show and you yeah. called in sick. It was just so like, good. <laughs> oh, no. Couldn't even get out of bed. <laughs> so Mar- Mars or Todd or Mars, Mars or something. Oh, I did that one time in my entire media career and it was because I actually went to Mexico the night before and had a little bit too much to drink uh, and well, just didn't make it to work the next that's morning. That's a better story. I went to Mist Valley. <laughs> had a couple too many beers oh man 